Before we get to the review, before my screening of The Missing Link, there was a trailer for Shaun the Sheep 2, Farmageddon. Somehow, I had no idea that this movie was even a thing. I, I loved the first movie. I'm so glad that we're getting a sequel. When's it coming out? Oh. Oh, now, that's just not fair. still there. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi. You can speak. Yes, and um, I write as well. My penmanship isn't great, but, uh, you know, opposable thumbs and <sighs> fat fingers, you know. Leica Animation have earned the reputation, quite deservedly so in my opinion, of delivering more prestige and contemplative family movies, from the offbeat and dark nature of their debut feature Coraline, to their epic emotional masterpiece Kubo and the Two Strings, a stop motion company are able to pump large quantities of money into creating vast worlds and colourful casts of characters literally by hand, but are also able to take creative story risks without the risk of box office pushback, mainly because the company is being bankrolled by Nike co-founder Phil Knight, whose son Travis Knight owns the company, so if a movie doesn't make Make much money then, who cares, they made something great. Heck, in my opinion, their weakest movie is Paranorman, but it's still a film I hugely admire for going in such interesting directions and showcasing a rare maturity for a mainstream animated film. Despite that movie's shortcomings, I'd take a film like that any day over another secret life of pets, but it seems the universe has other plans for me. As for The Missing Link, coming from Paranorman director Chris Butler, well, I can't say I had unreasonable expectations for it because I didn't want to get too carried away after Laika's Kubo and the Two Strings set a new benchmark for the stop-motion subgenre. I mean, seriously, this type of commitment and craftsmanship, it, it just breaks my brain. And I did lower my preconceptions for the film, expecting a slightly more marketable buddy road trip movie, but honestly, I still found myself being slightly let down by the movie. But let me back up. Hugh Jackman voices Sir Lionel Frost, an adventurer who wants to prove the existence of the legendary Sasquatch in order to gain entry to an elite explorers club run by Stephen Fry's Lord Piggott Dunsep. He finds the Sasquatch voiced by Zach Galifianakis and promises to take him to the Himalayas in the hopes of finding more of his kind. Along the way, they're joined by Adelina, a widow and former Flame of Frost voiced by Zoe Saldana, whilst also being pursued by a hitman voiced by Timothy Oliphant, who's been tasked with taking him out. The plot is essentially a throwback to the works of Jules Verne, a la Around the World in 80 Days, where posh British twats get the plot started by placing high-stakes bets with each other. The film is up front, with Lionel Frost mainly taking the Sasquatch, which he names Mr. Link, across the world so he can gain passageway to high society. The lesson he has to learn over the course of the movie is clear, and if you've seen any films like this, then you'll see the components at play, but the film doesn't really earn Lionel's character arc. The character is too resistant to the idea of change, so when Adelina has to give him a dressing down and explain his own story arc, to him, it reads less like, hmm, you're right, I should change, and more, ugh, fine, I'll go through a character arc already, mum. It also doesn't help that Mr. Link as a character, while charmingly performed by Galifianakis and admirably brought to life through expert puppeteering, isn't really an interesting or endearing character, and Zoe Saldana's dynamic with the rest of the group is all kinds of confusing, with a really strange on-again, off-again flirtatious relationship with Lionel Frost, which doesn't really amount to anything. Also, the nuts and bolts journey of getting from North America to Asia works, but it's oddly devoid of conflict. Sure, they get into scrapes with the hitman every so often, but that's the primary danger, as opposed to a globe-hopping adventure adventure, where there's a new interesting threat to be found in every location. This results in a second act that really drags along, not helped by the rather weak characterization of our lead trio. I don't want to sound too harsh in the film because there's a lot to like here, especially the voice cast with Hugh Jackman on reliably top form, and Stephen Fry is surprisingly out of character here by not employing his normal voice. I was legit really surprised when the credits rolled to find his name there. His villain is also thematically really interesting, with Piggott Dunseb feeling so threatened by elements of the new world like science, women's suffrage, and facts, that he takes drastic steps to make sure that they never make their way to his social circle, and uh, holy shit, does Laika have their fingers on the pulse of what's wrong with contemporary society. On the topic of subtext, I couldn't help but read some allegories between Mr. Link and transgender people, not just because Mr. Link would rather be referred to as Susan, but also because Susan has many effeminate mannerisms, people keep bringing up his sex organs, Susan doesn't feel comfortable in men's clothing, the themes of wanting to find acceptance in an evolving world despite regressive people wanting to reject science with force. I am the least qualified person to talk about this topic, but I would be interested in any trans takes on the movie. 
Also, it should go without saying that the animation is stunning. The sets and characters are designed with real finesse. There's an inventive action set piece around halfway through, which is like a cross between the Titanic corridor chases and the hallway fight in Inception that's a real sight to behold. One detail that initially threw me off was the character's skin tones adapting to different weather conditions, but it only distracted me because it's such a notable attention to detail that we just don't see in stop motion movies. The bar has absolutely been raised with the missing link, and even if you don't like the film, I can imagine its art book still being a fascinating fascinating read. I just wish the story itself had a bit more meat to it, or at least a more engaging cast of characters. It's still better than most non-Pixar animated movies that get released, but I couldn't help escape the feeling that something really was missing here, and I give the film three stars out of five. <gasps> we call it... What does it mean? Keep out, we hate you. Chubby, ta 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 chubby, ta 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 chubby, ta 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 chubby.